What would you do if you saw something unexplainable in the sky? Who would you tell? How would you react? August 21st, 2004 is a day many in Tinley Park will never forget. Oh my God, like I just saw the most amazing thing in my life. I have no clue as to what, what to believe it could be. Could be anything. I would have no idea. How can so many people from so many different towns see the same thing? A phenomenon that sparked a number of emergency calls and confusion in town still lingers among its people. And some don't know that they'll ever be able to forget it. All of a sudden, uh, red lights started appearing in the sky. At first, we thought they could have been flares, but there was no flickering. It was red, green, white, blue. This was something unusual. Was it flares on balloons? I mean, if you want to believe that, that's fine, but it's an absolute lie. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence released a preliminary assessment report on Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, or UAP. But this report never confirmed or denied what UAPs are. And the report's disappointing, it's nine pages long, has no data in it, and no credible scientists are going to believe that UFOs are alien spacecraft unless there's a lot of data to support that. All I can say is it was an unidentified flying object. It's a UFO. It's a legitimate concern. If they're not alien spacecraft, then some of them are real phenomena. It was something cinematic to those in Tinley Park and surrounding communities late summer of 2004. Block parties, barbecues, and concerts occupied the lives of residents across suburban Chicagoland. But a 17-year-old mystery still lingers among the region. Reports of three red lights in a triangular pattern appearing in the sky had witnesses confused, unsure of what they were seeing. Some watched in awe, others grabbed a camera. But to this day, all who saw the formation in the sky still don't know what it was. Tinley Park alone has been home to at least 168 sightings of unknown lights in the sky between 2001 and 2015. There have been so many that Tinley Park has become famous for its sightings. Nearly two decades later, the unknown phenomena can't escape the minds of many in Tinley Park. Hello, my name is Mike Nuren. I'm 32 years old and I'm a Tinley Park resident. I've been a resident my whole life and I'm an experiencer of the Tinley Park lights. My experience dates back to August of 2004 um, when I was just a sophomore in high school. Me and my friends came up to uh, Volunteer Park here in Tinley Park, just hanging out between probably 8.45 and 9.45 p.m. at night. I had been uh, looking up at the stars, just kind of minding my own business, just kind of trailing off and uh, thinking to myself how cool would it be if I saw something flying around in the sky that you never see. All of a sudden, uh, red lights started appearing in the sky. At first I thought, you know, there's a bunch of radio towers in, in the area, so I thought that's probably those at first, but then they started moving closer, coming from the west, heading towards the east. Thoughts in my mind were that, you know, this is a UFO. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I knew it wasn't an airplane. I knew it wasn't like anything that you normally see in the sky at night. To me, they were flipping around, changing position. The whole experience probably lasted five minutes. Two of the friends I was with, they were sitting over there just kind of doing their own thing, and I kept saying, guys, look up. You have to look up. There is something in the sky. I think it's a UFO. I don't know what it is. You guys have to look at this. And I just kept getting all, leave us alone, leave us alone, <laughs> you know, sort of thing. And I just remember sitting in my inside like, Oh my God, like I just saw the most amazing thing in my life. Nobody believes me. 
And now, and then, you know, I come home and my dad wants to go and get a pizza. It's like about 10 o'clock now. And I said, sure. And I just remember sitting in the car with him. Like, I can't tell you about this because for one, you're going to think I'm crazy. You're probably going to drug test me because I'm only a 16 year old kid that was just out at a park at night. And, uh, and now is saying I saw UFOs or saw aliens or something like that. In the beginning, it was kind of a, a lonely experience, but a very amazing experience. And I started realizing I wasn't the only one, and I wasn't crazy, and that there was plenty of people that were starting to see this. Mike was correct. Residents from around the region witnessed the phenomenon, such as bewildered Tinley Park experiencer, TJ Japcon, who recorded the mysterious moment. I got it! I got it on tape! Very unusual three lights. My name's TJ Japcon. I'm a resident from Tinley Park, and I just did see the, uh, the Tinley Park lights, but we don't know really what they were. There were three amber lights uh, of an amber light that I cannot tell you I've seen any type of amber light like that before. The color was the red flag because I've never seen an amber light like that before. I ran home, grabbed my camera, and then started recording. But when I tried to zoom in and try to focus on it, that's where I saw some really weird colors that were flashing all over. It was red, green, white, blue, yellow. It had its own random pattern of how it moved. It was weird. We thought that they were all separate. They just rotated into the most peculiar triangle shape that We've, right. never, we've never seen it before. Yeah. It was just an exciting experience. You've never seen anything like that before. And you just, you know, your, mic, your mind piques the curiosity of what it might be, what it could be, what it, yeah. we just don't know. Nobody knew. And nobody knew how to react either. Calls began to flood the Tilly Park Police Station. Reports received through a Freedom of Information Act request state suspicious circumstances occurred in the area that night. Several calls for service concerned about three unidentified bright red lights in the sky were recorded. August 21st wasn't the only date in 2004 that a mass unknown sky sighting was recorded in Tinley Park. On October 31st, another sighting was recorded. This time, on-duty police officer Greg King, who has been working with the department for three decades, saw what many were referring to just weeks prior. My name is Greg King. I've been a lifelong resident of Tinley Park. Been a police officer here for 30, over 31 years. And I did see the Tinley Park lights. We'd heard about the lights in August. Uh, one of our officers had actually reported it, but we didn't know what to make of it. What I experienced with the lights was on Halloween evening in 2004. My shift for the evening had ended. I was in the back parking lot talking with one of my sergeants when we were alerted to the fact that the lights had been spotted. We started looking in, on the north horizon and sure enough, here they came. At first we thought they could have been flares, but there was no flickering. It was a steady red light. We contemplated, could it be balloons? Could it be Chinese lanterns? But again, there was nothing that indicated that it had any kind of flame to it. The three of them traveled almost in unison, but the triangular shape did change as it moved and drifted our direction. Observed it for approximately 20 to 30 minutes before it uh, drifted off to the east. Ours, my sergeant did contact our dispatch. Uh, they had been receiving reports from citizens across town uh, of the same thing that we were watching. They did make some inquiries, I believe, to uh, various agencies and they reported nothing unusual. There may even have been a call up to uh, one of the military bases 
and they reported that they had nothing active in the area. So it was very unusual and nothing anybody could figure out exactly what it was. I have no clue as to what, what to believe it could be. Could very well be somebody's grand experiment. To my knowledge, I don't believe there'd be any consequences to a hoax if somebody had developed something that made for an interesting news article or uh, their 15 minutes of fame, so to speak. I don't see what, uh, I don't see what would have come from it. It would be awfully interesting to find out what it was and how they did it. If this was a prank, they were very successful. Many suspect the lights are a hoax. In fact, we even received tips regarding how it was done. But it led to dead ends. We decided to try out the flares on balloons theory for ourselves. Here is our shot. When taking a look at locations where sightings were reported in Tintley Park, it ironically created a triangle as well. Although many believe it to be a prank, the Illinois director of the Mutual UFO Network says otherwise. This was something unusual. Was it flares on balloons? I mean, if you want to believe that, that's fine, but it's an absolute lie. Hello, my name is Sam Moranto. I am the Illinois State Director for MUFON, which is the Mutual UFO Network. I'm an investigative researcher. And when it comes to the Tinley Park case, I am the lead investigator. I've been an investigator with MUFON for 20 years. I've been a, a state director for 13 or, 13 or 14 years. I've been an investigative researcher since I was a little tot. I've been an experiencer since 1959. The uh, sighting that took place here on August 21st actually wasn't the first sighting. There was another uh, sighting back in April of that year, in 2004. Uh, 2004 was what I refer to as the year of the weird. Before the August 21st date, within that sequence of time, there was a mass sighting that actually took place in uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, which was on the 19th. An object was in the sky for over nine hours and stayed there over 30,000 feet. It was actually seen by pilots, too, above, above the 30,000-foot level. And uh, later that day, uh, possibly the very same object or objects uh, was seen in the um, Arizona sky. And you could actually go online and see that footage. Some of the most remarkable footage of object with that amber red color glowing and going on and off. Different forms of plasma going off. Multiple locations and then voila, here we are. On the 21st of August, we have the uh, Air and Water Show. And then that night, Ozzy Osbourne finishes up with the lights in the sky. The phenomena across the board is genuine. Not in every case. Imagine now, of all the reports that we get, we get over five, 7,000 reports, just to us, a year. Uh, 90% of them can be identified, you know, one way or another, or we don't have enough information. Sometimes there's hoaxes. In other words, we could shuffle that off. That other residual amount of, say, 10% could be nibbled down even some more. So let's say we're left with uh, 3 to 5% of something of, of real value and truly unusual. Well, we've spoke to at least 200 people during this, that period of time and still see people speaking to you today. I mean, people come out, we meet people on a regular basis that uh, when we have meetings that they say they've seen the Tinley Park sighting. In my book, I, and, and from what I, my opinion is, this is one of the best mass sighting cases around. Now the description, everybody's description is a little bit different. The reason why is everybody has a different perspective. We all have different filters, okay? We don't see everything exactly the same. So what we do is we get the information from each person and you fit that together and guess what? You get a better idea. We had, I don't know how many sets of, of video, 13, and we mix, we get them together. Then we get the, we get the data, we analyze it. We do our triangulations to figure out height. In other words, we apply all the scientific principles to analyzing it. And yes, 
This was something unusual. It wasn't flares on balloons. First of all, the, object, the objects were seen for days, for days, near Kosovo, British Columbia, New York, Ohio, Texas, and then on the 23rd, Melbourne, Australia, videotaped in Melbourne, Australia, okay? So, I mean, bottom line is, this was something unusual. And that's fine. What's wrong with that? The Office of the Director of National Intelligence released a preliminary assessment report on Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, or UAPs. The report was a letdown to those who researched ufology, but something it did do was lay out a need to create a formalized process to collect data and transparency amongst the United States intelligence agencies and the military. We asked University of Arizona professor of astronomy, Chris Impey, to sit down with us and explain the report, along with its significance, after reading his thoughts on the release. It's important for transparency reasons, so the military have been conducting mostly secret investigations of what we used to be UFOs. They rebranded them as UAPs, partly because of the stigma attached to UFOs. They've been doing this since the 1940s, since Roswell, and a lot of that time it was secret. My name's Chris Impey. I'm a professor of astronomy at the University of Arizona. Uh, I've been here for 35 years teaching, doing research, mostly on extragalactic astronomy and cosmology and astrobiology. I've also had an interest in space travel and the future of it. Um, I've written books on all those subjects. They were basically told by Congress to do this, so it wasn't that they were about to be transparent, that Congress told them to do a report. Uh, the report's disappointing, it's nine pages long, has no data in it, has no real strong interpretation, draws no conclusions really for almost all the 131 incidents over 10 or 15 years that it talks about. So in that sense, pretty disappointing actually. No scientist or no credible scientists are gonna believe that UFOs are alien spacecraft unless there's a lot of data to support that. So it's the beginning of a process, it's, it's just, it was the first a uh, little report. Uh, again, Congress is probably going to continue to express an interest in this because of the national security issue, uh, which is legitimate. It's a legitimate concern. Even if they're not, if they're not alien spacecraft, then some of them are real phenomena and incursions into American airspace and proximity to military personnel and expensive hardware is, and potentially from a foreign adversary with technology that we don't understand or possess, that's a national security issue. So Congress is gonna keep a very high level of interest in this. And so I think the military is gonna to have to continue to be forthcoming. I didn't expect it to be so flimsy. That's really pretty much of a nothing burger. It costs $22 million and I'm a taxpayer. I would not be happy with that return on investment. Um, so no, it's, it's not what I expected or hoped for. It, there's no data in it. it. There's almost no interpretation. There's one actual fully interpreted event and it's a deflating weather balloon. That's not very exciting or interesting. Um, they decide, they resolutely avoid using obviously UFO. They, there's the word alien and extraterrestrial doesn't appear anywhere in the report. So they, they, they stay well clear of that and that's fine, but they don't draw any conclusions. So you know, there's really not much there. It's pretty flimsy. The big issue for me is that there's just an enormous number of people who are very willing to connect dots that you do not connect. When you're a scientist, you're a skeptic and you do not connect dots you don't have to connect. So seeing something that you can't explain, fine. You know, uh, the, the task of connecting that to, uh, you know, alien superior intelligence with superior technology of travel, you know, hundreds of trillions of miles, uh, to, to just visit us in our skies and, and incidentally, why are they only appearing to US military pilots and not the Chinese pilots or the Russian pilots? Make a long list of things about UFO sightings that make scientists extremely skeptical. The bar is set very high to demonstrate the hypothesis that these are aliens visiting us. And too many people just fall straight into that. It's like the X-Files they want to believe, and they do. 17 years ago, many in Tilly Park saw what they describe as the most amazing thing they could have ever imagined seeing in the sky, leaving many clueless as to what they were witnessing. 
What is interesting is that the people we spoke to did not have any feelings of fear when seeing the lights. What we found was more shock, excitement, and confusion. But no matter the feeling, the one common question all one answered is, what was it? To this day, that question remains unanswered. And maybe we will never know. But what we do know is that the people of Tilly Park have seen these unidentified phenomena. And to them, it will never be forgotten.